since time immemorial, human beings have been social beings in nature. And now with the increased use of social media platforms, especially among the youth, billions of people globally communicate, share information, and make connections. But what impact does it have on the youth's mental health? Could you kindly introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm Glenn, Glenn Brand Minor. Hi, my name is RJ. Hi, my name is Michael Karanja. Hello, my name is Christina Limongala. I'm a student at SIU, concentrating in broadcast, and I'm also a content creator. I'm a content creator, a YouTuber, and uh, yeah, I love what I do, and I love Arsenal. I'm a student. And also I'm an entrepreneur. I am a student at Pioneer High School. I am a versatile visual artist. I write, I paint, I speak. I'm also a self-published author. And outside of that, I am a professional communicator working in communications. On average, how many hours do you spend on social media? I think on a day I spend probably six to eight hours. Um, social media. <laughs> Before I lost my phone, I would spend probably 10 hours on social media. I'm a creator, so I love doing people's, you know, researching on people's work. And without my phone, it's reduced to about 5 hours to 6 hours. 4, 5, 6? I don't know. I spend at least 5 hours. I'd say on average 3 to 4 hours. Mental health is not an openly discussed topic in Kenya. Mental illnesses such as depression and anxiety are not seen to carry great weight. Speaking to Anastasia Obonyo, who is both a psychologist and a content creator, she gives us through an introspective lens her position at the intersection of both social media and mental health. Okay, my name is Anastasia Obonyo. I'm a therapist. I'm a primary school teacher and I'm a mental health advocate. I am also the founder of Tattoo, the Affordable Therapist Union, which offers affordable therapy to those people who may not be able to afford normal therapy. Also, I pursued psychology in USIU and currently I am pursuing a certificate in counseling and therapy from a money counseling training institute. What has been your experience with mental health and why did you choose it as your area of specialization? Well, uh, my journey with mental health has actually been very personal. A few years ago, I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder, but now I'm doing much, much better than I was. It was actually three years ago. And what I realized is that I didn't have somebody to look up to in my journey. So what I decided to do is be that person for somebody else, hence why I decided to choose it in the area of specialization. Also, I decided to take psychology because I wanted to understand what was going on with me, aside from the therapy sessions and the medication and the journey itself. I wanted to understand in depth what's going on in my mind, how can I help myself, and how can I help other people who might need somebody like me in their journey, maybe a guide, maybe somebody to tell them that they're not alone. According to a study by the Mental Health Task Force in Kenya, it is estimated that one in every 10 people suffer from a common mental disorder. The number increased to one in every four people among patients attending routine outpatient services. Depression and anxiety disorders are the leading mental illness diagnosed in Kenya. Do you think social media has affected your mental health? Oh, for sure. Yes. I think it depends. Uh, yes, it has. It did have an impact on your mental health. Of course, there's that issue of comparison, being a creator, especially yeah. when you put your work out there. And it's almost as if you have to rely on people to validate your work. And I think from a creator's point, it's, it's frustrating. It definitely has because it's the first thing I check in the morning and the last thing I check at night. Um, at some point in my life, I was trying to live a lie, so like you know how things you see on social media are like so real, they're like too good to be true, so you want to go the extra mile, and I felt like it affected my self-esteem. I would say when 
using social media when I was younger, it did have an impact on my mental health. There was not a lot of imagery on like body positivity and what you would see would be the mainstream, you know, people being petite. And this would impact, you know, how you view yourself in relationship with your body. But with more people coming on social media and bringing more messages about learning to love ourselves and being at home in our bodies, I became an advocate for that through my own social media platform. Uh, I'll start with the cons because they're the obvious ones. You know, everybody tells you in social media you're always trying to uh, compare yourself to somebody. But yeah, it's actually a very major con. It's part of the reason why there is such a spike in mental illnesses amongst our generation. And when I say my generation, I mean 18 to 35. There's a sudden spike in depression, uh, generalized anxiety disorders, there's so many. Now this is because while we were growing up, and I'm in reference to the African society mainly, when we were growing up we were always being compared to somebody else by our parents. And I'm not saying that's wrong, I'm just saying it was inflated by the fact that social media now came up and it grew. And as it grew, that comparison thing just grew with you, because you ended up now comparing yourself to somebody behind the screen. You know, you're comparing your body to somebody else's body type, you're comparing your skin to somebody else's skin type, and that sort of that has sort of led to the spike in mental illnesses amongst the African community. Now, another cons is that you tend to abandon the authentic you by doing these comparisons. What I mean is that when you are comparing yourself to, let's say, somebody with this type of body, that's not you. It's never going to be you. You can pursue it if you want, but that's not you because you are the only you in this world. So why are you abandoning yourself? to go and pursue somebody else. It's not right. And because of that, your mind is unable to cope with day-to-day -day activities because you sort of feel like an imposter. Because if you try and be the real you, that's not the you that you want. But that's the only you that you can be. Uh, for the pros though, I think that social media has really helped in information. We are really trying as a mental health community in Kenya, but we're not where I really want us to be. I remember having an issue trying to find Kenyan therapists on Instagram and I did this whole question thing where people could share their ads and nobody knew. I had to go and actually research them, like type it out, hashtag mental health Kenya and I couldn't find them. But because of me being able to find them, I've been able to share their pages. So you have a lot of people sharing information about mental health in Kenya. You have a lot of people trying to help you cope with your mental illness and trying to help you cope with daily life. So, and you know, because of our generation, the first place we go to, we don't even go to our website first. We first go to your social media page, then we go to your website. So social media has helped spread awareness about mental health. It's helped other people figure out that they're not alone in their journey. There are so many other people that are going through what they're going through. There are so many people who have gone through what they're going through. So it can, it helps in that context. Uh, like for me, <clears throat> um, it's how I help my clients. I refer them to certain pages, I send them certain posts from various mental health pages. It's helped in that way. And also, it's helped with Taki, my organization. You know, people didn't know that therapy could be affordable. People weren't aware that you, know, you don't have to bleed your pockets dry to get a therapy session with somebody, and you will get professional help. So if it wasn't for social media, people wouldn't have been able to understand that they can get help without trying to bleed their pockets dry. Tonight, social media anxiety and the pressure to be liked by getting likes on what our young people post online. Have you experienced fear of missing out, feelings of inadequacy and anxiety? Yes. Yeah, I think I have. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Inadequacy, yes, because of likes. But that's something I had to teach myself to get kind of over. And then I see so many people are going out for brunch and people are going out, you know, to meet their friends. So yeah, when you see all these things and you all you've been doing is just really watch stuff from home. <laughs> there's, that, there's that fear that you're missing out on a lot. I just feel like I wasn't good enough. Again, I felt like um, I, is it okay to use the word failure? Because you see your age mates, you see your classmates, you were living big, living large. So I felt like I was inadequate at that time. I've seen on social media that there are many young people my age who have accomplished a lot. 
I wanting to become a professional footballer when I grow up. I have seen very many youngsters who are coming up the ranks and have joined academies. And how does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel unaccomplished that I am not able to compete with them. Yes, I have seen such feelings. Mainly, maybe it's maybe fear of missing out. For instance, maybe you know, given that I spent so much of um, my early adulthood into my early twenties in university, and when people are seeming to do more fun things, but you know, you're always in school and you're still traveling and all these things, and you wonder, you know, maybe you could do those things, but. We see that our lives are on different um, wavelengths, or rather, we're moving at different speeds. So, what they're doing cannot be what I'm doing because we all have different priorities in life. The question remains Are there healthy habits we can adapt in our use of social media? The first thing I always tell people is unfollow accounts that make you feel like you have to compare yourself to somebody else. You know, if you're scrolling through your own feed and you're getting stressed or you're getting anxious, that's an abusive relationship between you and you. Just cleanse it. Follow people like mental health advocates. Our job is to just teach you, make sure you're calm, help you with coping mechanisms for your mental illness, help you with co coping mechanisms for life, and, and just, you know, have a feed that just helps you grow passively. Another thing I always tell people is follow something that, you know, makes you happy. For example, I follow uh, nail pages. It's because I like watching the process of people making nails and you know, it's very satisfying. So you find my page is mainly like nail videos or other mental health advocates. There's no, you know, or maybe even food bloggers. There's no, there's not much about me comparing myself to somebody else because my feed is supposed to be something that helps me be the best me I can be. And it's not about comparison all the time. You have to break that chain of comparing yourself to somebody else. Another thing is that if you feel like you know social media is too much, take breaks. You know you can take breaks from social media. I have an app called Stay Focused, and it locks my apps for me, like at certain times during the day, and I can't log in or open the app. It will completely shut down my phone. Sometimes it even switches off my phone, like if I'm on it too much. So you know you can take a break. Another thing is use social media to grow yourself. Follow pages like if you're trying to learn a new thing. Follow pages that can help you um, learn that new thing. If you want to better yourself, let's say in working out, follow workout pages and don't just follow the workout pages of people who are already built and buff. Follow somebody else's journey. You know, somebody who maybe even has the same body type as you. It helps motivate you. So use social media to help yourself grow. Don't use social media to beat yourself down. So yeah.